What's up, and welcome to another episode of Evie's Review. Who would bother messing around with these old 8-bit microcomputers? Well, me, that's who. Can you guess what all these machines have in common, other than being mostly impulse eBay purchases? Well, they all have less than 640k of RAM. Nothing is over 4 MHz in processing power. Most of them have video circuitry that still cycles from the CPU. They're also some of the smallest form factors of their incarnations. The Apple IIc was the first portable model of the Apple II series. The Atari XEGS was the only Atari 8-bit with the keyboard as optional. The standalone Atom, believe it or not, has a smaller footprint than the ColecoVision expansion module number 2. But there's still one more thing all these machines have in common. They all work with the Backbit Pro cartridge. Yes, running games on vintage computers with an SD card may be nothing new, but what if there was a Swiss army knife that you could carry around in your pocket that was capable of playing games on any of these computers with no other accessories required? Whether your machine sports a MOS 6502, Zilog Z80, Motorola 6809, or TI TMS 9900, it doesn't matter. Backbit supports them all. Check out these demonstrations of 12 vintage computer systems, all supported by the Backbit Pro cartridge. All right, you know what time it is? It's ColecoVision Atom time. Got a little cassette drive in there, which I'm never gonna use. And you see the Backbit cartridge is backwards. That's because this is the prototype adapter. So if I turn this baby on, first it makes an annoying beep. And then I get this menu here, and I can even navigate with my Atom keyboard. Let's see, I want, I don't even know what I want, but if I wanted Frogger, I could just type Frogger and press enter. Whoa. And for some reason, this thing is loud. So I press the reset button, I go back to the browser, I get more choices here. Now, what would I actually want to play on here? Ooh, war games. War games. Ooh. Got my controller in here. Wage some thermonuclear war. Okay, honestly, I have no idea how to play this. So I can reset the Coleco or I can reset the whole back bit. Now, this joystick does navigate here, but honestly, this joystick is not in very good shape. So I would rather just use the keyboard. Now, I know the version of Zaxxon on here is terrible, but I've been told Donkey Kong was pretty good on here. Donkey Kong for Adam. Now, if it only wasn't for that crappy joystick, I'd be enjoying this game already. Oh. oh! Now this joystick is not great by any means, but it's a heck of a lot better than that other joystick. Boulder Dash. Oh yeah. Oh, they want they want me to press number on this thing. Yeah, unfortunately, this controller is not doing its thing. But you get the idea. You got 
pretty much every ColecoVision game here. Ooh, Montezuma's Revenge. That's gotta be one of the best games. Oh yeah. Oh! Yeah, okay, this ColecoVision controller sucks, but what else is new? Oh, and by the way, it's actually not 3.32 a.m. here, so I can go over to my handy backbit utilities and set the time. You can do this on any backbit machine, and it happens to be exactly 3 p.m., so actually, no, not 3.00, military time 15.00. There we go, and 3 p.m. And you can even turn the machine off, turn it back on, and it's still 3 p.m., amazing. All right, I'm turning on this Apple II. We got back bits, and let's see, my favorite game. One of my favorite games is Choplifter. So even though it sounds like it's loading from the disc, there's actually no disc in here. It's actually loading from there. Okay, I'll play a little bit. Die tank. There we go. Oh, look at all these people needing to be rescued. Let's go save these people. Right now, if I want to go back to the menu, I have to press the button on the cartridge and then do the reset sequence. Bongo Bongo, that almost sounds like Wango Boingo. Okay, so I can go here, check this out. This is a three and a half inch floppy of Prince of Persia. And now because this is loading from the smart drive, you're not gonna hear any sound from the main drive here. Now that music is terrible on the built-in speaker because it's using one channel for like three channels of sound. But game works fine. Let's see if I can grab this. Yes. All right. Yeah, it plays great. Yeah, it actually plays pretty nicely with the analog joystick. Yeah, this is one of those games when you start playing, you kind of don't want to stop. Oh, here we go. Check this out. Boom! Oh, wow. <laughs> Love how the whole screen turns red. And watch. Yay! Okay. All right, got to press the button, go back to the menu. Otherwise, rebooting would just reboot the game itself. And for those who like convenience, here is Total Replay. Get some help. I can browse games. Lots of games, so many games. 
Tons of games. Lots of games. Ooh, Conan. Check out this animation here. Conan! With the sword. Ooh, yeah. I know about you, but that kind of makes me want to dance. Yeah, so that's Conan. Conan, Conan, Conan. Oh, whoa! Oh, much better playing this with a joystick than with a keyboard. Oh! Okay, I guess we can fall. So if I just hit reboot, it's going to go back and load the same thing over again. So pretty much every other, so pretty much every other backbit adapter will allow some way to do a single button reset, but that's not possible yet with the Apple because there's actually no such thing as a single reset button. I know this says reset, but it doesn't actually do anything on its own. The other thing I got here is the WAS format. So I could load, for instance, um, Dino Eggs. Let's try this. Yep. Good old fashioned copy protection. But check it out, because it's a WAS file, it loads. Thank you, WAS. Uh, full joystick. Ooh, a time warp. Okay, come on, come on. Oh. Really? Do you have to... Uh-huh. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Yeah. Oh! I've been contaminated. You jump in this game. Alright, I have had enough dino waves, that's for sure. Alright, check this out. Gemstone Warrior. Ooh, strategic stimulations. Look, it's got a little loading bar there. Now you might think this is slow loading, but this is like light speed compared to the Commodore. Beginner. There's a temple. Ooh. Somebody remember this game. That's the temple. <laughs> yeah, I definitely remember this game. Definitely a strategic stimulation. Okay, yeah, don't shoot the chest. That does not work. Hmm. It's got 
gotta be a way to open this thing. Or not. Wait, it's a temple. And this game really gives me that feeling of not even deja vu, but like vu vu. Like I just definitely remember playing this back in the day. Oh my goodness. Who knew you can shoot a ghost? Yeah, so pretty exciting, huh? So I'm gonna turn on my Atari XEGS. See the back bit menu. I'm gonna use the cursor keys or the joystick to navigate. Now, one game I like here, it's called Pogo Joe in the XEX format. I'm gonna run that. This is basically like a souped up version of Qbert. You see I press the reset button and it goes back to the menu. I can also press the button on the cartridge. They both work the same because they're actually physically connected. I have a solderless jumper inside my Atari. I can go back through this menu here. I got some cart format games here. BC's Quest for Tires. Start that. Personally, I prefer Grog's Revenge, that's BC's Quest for Tires number two. What else? There's a lot of stuff on here. Well, here's a fancy game, Pitfall 2, Lost Caverns. Personally, I prefer the original Pitfall. Karateka, or as some people call Karateka. Oh. Hello. So I'm gonna be going through these pretty fast. I'm not gonna leave a ton of time to actually play the games, but you'll get the idea. Now, this is a great version of Raid Over Moscow. I don't know if this came before or after the Commodore 64, but I love the colors in this version. Okay, now I know on the Commodore you press like the function key to open up the door. I'm not sure what it is on, oh, there you go, space. Space is the place. See if I can get a ship in there. Whoa! Now, this is actually really easy if you get a strategy to it, but I'm not really playing with strategy right now. I'm more of playing with sheer luck. Ouch. It's really not that hard. See that? That wasn't that hard. Now, the way to actually start a world war is you take your little ship here and you find a target. One of these, I don't know if it's the white one or the black one that I want. But you go down here. 
see if I get a black one. Nope. Ah, the white one. That's it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, one thing I do notice is the Commodore version of this particular screen has nicer sprites, but then this version has nicer colors. Yeah, these sprites are pretty ugly. They're like monochrome. Oh, there I go. Anyway, you can also go to basic if you press the break key here. And then lastly, I got the ROM image, which is basically the same as this car image. Might just be like a different header on there. Choplifter. Oh, this has got to be like the worst version of Choplifter. Look at those awful colors. Okay, you got to get the later version of Choplifter. Oh yeah. This version got souped up graphics. So another cool thing you can do here is you can type the name of something like, let's say I want to go to food fight and I just type in food fight and there it is. Eat the cone. Yeah, don't get eaten. Just eat the cone. So that's basically it. What more could you want from your Atari? All right, we got a MSX here. Boots right into the back bit. And we got a whole suite of games here. Check it out, we got Load Runner. Am I going down? I already got all the gold. Oh wait, do these guys have some of the gold? Not that guy. There we go. You know, it doesn't really look like gold. It looks more like a big hamburger. Whoa. All right. You get the idea. So going back to back, of course, you gotta go back to the MSX screen each time. It would be nice if that was automated, but the problem is that every different MSX system has a different screen there. Okay, now this is a classic Contra or Grizor, but of course everyone knows it as Contra for the MSX2. Check it out, Konami. Oh yeah. This is a classic. Push the space key, asphalt jungle. Damn. Oh, that's it. I knew how to jump in this game. Oh wait, look like a jump. Ah, N. Okay, oh, you got the choose machine gun or normal gun.
Au! Game over. So what else you got? There's this Ultima 3 Exodus. That's like a pretty bizarre version of this game. And the thing I want to show you is that it's compatible with Backbid as far as the saving system goes. So if I go just to the, let's see, the modified version of the game that I made, Origin Systems. Pony Canyon. So I don't know if you know, but I don't read Japanese, so I have no idea what that said there. But what I do know is that this is the party. This is the party that I set up last game. And if you go back here, you can see I can go to the original version of the game. The original save version, that is. And you see how there's no characters right there? That means that I don't have a saved game and it won't allow me to select this. So, I could start a new game. And what else we got here? Rostan. Rostan Saga. Classic. Right there. Check out these enemies are one color. Let's jump in this one. be a way to jump. If anyone knows how to jump. Oh. Graph. Okay, graph to jump. Yeah. Man, I still can't believe the, the enemies have one color. Oh, I think I'm drowning. Oh, okay. That's it. Now, another real classic. Check us out, our type. Oh yeah. Blast off and strike. Push the start button. Is there a start button on you? Oh my goodness, look at that power up. That is some serious power. got for me. I don't think I had all these power-ups last time I played this. Whoa! It's out of nowhere. Oh! No! No!
Man, this guy's come out of nowhere. Like crazy missiles ever. Ow! Game over! Oh man. I was doing so good. Continue. Yeah, maybe next time. So yeah, this is that MSX. Super classic machine. Look, you got Rambo packing video version. Rambo! Okay, wait. This is not what I was expecting with Rambo. It's like a... It's like a Legend of Zelda Rambo. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's not exactly my cup of tea. Yeah, it's very, it's very much... I think maybe Legend of Zelda copied off this game? Interesting. Alright, so, you see what you got here? You got MSX, you got Backbit, and you got tons of games. What more could you ask for? So here we go. Here's some fun times with the Amstrad GX4000, part of the CPC Plus series. We got a small but exhilarating collection of games for this machine. It's kind of the same era as like the Commodore 64 game system. It's these 8-bit manufacturers that wanted to get into the games market but didn't have quite the hardware to compete with the likes of Nintendo. Let's see, Batman the movie. Oh yeah, there we go, Batman. Now of course we can't define keys because this machine has no keyboard. Now I'm not going to be able to show you that much because my controller decided to just stop working with the up key. But what can I show you here? You know, Pang was a pretty good game. You got bin or CPR format. Pang. Now this machine may not have the best resolution, but it's got really nice colors. And this game, oops. This game doesn't care if you don't have the up key. Uh-oh. All right. Oh yeah. So the game that came with this machine was called Burning Rubber. Oh yeah, so I like the music on this game. And once again, really great colors. Where this either wants the up key or it wants the other joystick. But I'll tell you, I think it's time to move to the next machine. All right, now once again, I've got a PAL machine. So you're gonna see a little PAL action on the ZX Spectrum. All right, now I got myself hooked up here with the joystick. I got a huge cache of Spectrum games. I think one of my personal favorites is gonna be the Auf Wiedersehen Monty. So if I pop this open.
Oh, you can't even get that little leaf. games you can play here on your Specky. I wonder if they got a good version of Frogger on here. Oh yeah, they got a lot of versions of Frogger. But which one is a good version? How about your computer? Bitte einen Augenblick written. Yeah. No, this is not a good version. Oh. DJL. Oh, yow. Oh, okay. So I'm just gonna go to a classic here. We got Jet Set Willy. Classic. Try the first one. Jet Set Willy. No, we don't need Trainer. Enter Grid Look. What? Okay, maybe I do need the Trainer. What's this? Got copy protection on this thing? Oh. I know that song. Okay, so the first level, there's a toilet. So this is an unusual model of the Spectrum because the joystick is not, it's not really a standard Spectrum joystick because this was actually the first machine produced by Amstrad. You can tell because it's a plus two and it's got the gray. Ooh, paper boy. Oh, yeah. Start game. Guess I'm just gonna have to go with the keyboard on this one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, OP. Oh, man. Okay, that's that's fast. Oh, yeah, that's fast. Yeah, not quite as pretty as the Commodore version, but hey, it plays. Oh! Smash. What a jerk I am. I'm just not very nice to myself. It looked like some power-up. What happened? Yeah, so that is Spectrum. Now, a close relative of the ColecoVision Atom computer is the Texas Instruments 99 4A. Uh, the difference is that this has a TMS 9900 processor, but they use a very similar display adapter, and that's why the screens look equally, um, well, see for yourself. <laughs> so here we go, we got press 2 for back bit, and we got back bit with our 256 bytes of main RAM. Now, there are arrow keys, but I've got to use the shift key to get to them. I've got a really bizarre looking joystick adapter that I made myself. I make actually a lot of my own little adapters. I managed to adapt this to a standard Meanwell external supply because the internal supply happened to die. So here I've got my selection of TI-99 games. I've got them arranged based on what they took to load. So Grom is kind of the standard format for games made by TI. Now you probably won't recognize hardly any of these games if you don't own a TI because they are all made by TI.
So I've even got a, a switcher on my joystick adapter. It's, yeah, it's rigged up with electrical tape. So CDG are some of the nicest games because they have basically the approval of TI, their official games, but they also have licenses. So like Frogger, you have to go back here every time, but that's a quirk of this machine. Here we go. Oh yeah. So then other games are like C or CD. That means it's just a binary. So these are often like third parties that didn't want to conform as much to the Texas Instruments way of doing things with their custom chips. Junkman Jr. I bet you can't guess what this game is meant to be a copy of. Oh, but instead of collecting gold, you're collecting junk. Interesting. It's kind of like what I do. Okay, what do we got here? We got back bit on the Tandy Color Computer 3. It'll also work on the Color Computer 2. So this machine has a relatively small collection of games, but it does have some pretty good games. We got Tetris. Now this game is supposed to be in color. I think my video adapter needs to be rejiggered over here. We got Super Pitfall. Okay, do I have analog color? I'm gonna say yes. You are not gonna believe this. I've got a PC Junior to Tandy Color Computer joystick adapter. Now what you're not gonna believe is I actually have to use this thing upside down. But it does work, you see, left, right. And that's because I made this switch that changes the mode. Ooh, I can even shoot. Boom. And, okay, that's a pit of spikes. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, this is a little better. Shoot. Oh! Yeah, okay. The aesthetics of this game may not be the most pleasing. Let's see. Rampage. I guess I do have... Wait. No, you don't want to say RGB monitor because that makes it look bad. If I say... No, I don't have an RGB monitor. Oh, that looks much better. But Lizzie the Lizard... left controller. Okay. Yeah, Mega Vitamin, I heard about that. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, that's not very nice. Not very nice to shoot someone in the face. Here we go. Okay, yeah, okay, now I'm destroying. Yeah. Yow. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Alright, so that's the long and the short of the Tandy Coco. Alright, check it out. This machine is classic. There's something special about this particular machine. And the special thing is that this machine actually didn't come from eBay. This machine is actually my very first computer, believe it or not. And I found this sucker in my dad's garage. I gave it a new keyboard because the keyboard was toast. I did a composite mod and I even retinned the motherboard because there was a exploded capacitor on there. So check this out. Flip this baby on. Back a bit, 2K RAM, that's because it's the uh, Timex Sinclair. The original ZX81 only came with 1K of RAM. Got these arrow keys. Now, a game I like on here is called Race. Race. So, you see the program, you can run it now. Okay. I assume I used the arrow, I don't know how I use this, this is the arrow you use, M and N. Oops. Come on, I don't know, probably have the wrong keys in there. Anyway, go back to the menu, let's check out Frogger. You know, this game, I have to say run two. Technically, it should auto start, but that has not been implemented yet. Cornsoft, yay, to play. One player, skill one, okay. Check this out. This is probably the only version of Frogger that needs two screens. Ah, jeez. Okay, what? I'm trying to get across the road, you guys. Oh. This game is very difficult. Okay, you know what? I give up. I'm going to 3D Monster Maze here. Three D maze. Run this baby. Anyone there? Um, yes. Roll up, roll up. Okay. See the amazing T Rex, King of Dinosaurs. Ah, yes. Management accept no responsibility. It's not a game for those of a nervous disposition. Hmm. The Miss of Time. Over you for about 30 seconds. Best of luck. Okay. I'm waiting. Oh, they actually turned the screen off to, to speed things up. And it works. Look at that. Rex lies in wait. He's hunting for you. So this is basically like the first Doom first like Wolfenstein 3D type game. Man, it's just like a maze. I, mean, I, I know it's called Monster Maze, but it's, it's really a maze. It goes on and on and on. Where is this going? <gasps> Footsteps approaching. Rex is seen. Oh, oh my god! Oh my... Wow. That... That was pretty crazy. 
All right, check it out. I got the Commodore Plus 4. It looks like the little brother to the Commodore 64. Now, this has got to be one of the coolest games, Jack Attack. Attack begins. Whoa. Squish. Okay, I guess I gotta squish these smiling green Pac-Man type things. It's like verse Pac-Man. Okay. Alright, once you've had enough of Jack Attack, you can reset to the menu. Let's check out some Arkanoid. So this is actually going to basic and running a program here. Bam. There we go. Oh, I smooth. Whoa. Oh snap, round two advance. And so this game really shows off the capability of the TED graphics chip, the graphics and sound chip. Kind of too bad that I wasn't taking advantage of like this back in the day. This is a modern recreation. All right, check it out. We got the VIC-20. We got the back brick cartridge. I'm gonna turn this baby on. Okay, forgive the conversion here. I had to run this through about like three adapters. Check it out. Chop lifter. Yeah. Wait. Really? That's chop lifter? It's like crap. Okay, that's some serious. Whoa. Check out that sound. Man. Oh man, that's some serious action. Look at that. Whoa. Okay, but you know what I really like on my VIC 20? Is some tooth invaders. Clean those teeth. So what else is cool in here? So believe it or not, this thing has a 35k memory expansion and I can run Doom on here. Literally. I don't know if this thing has joystick support. It definitely has fire support. Okay. You'll have to figure out how to play that game. What else do we got? Load Runner. Bam. Excellent audio, of course. They got me. Ooh, this is a classic. The sky is falling, but I gotta get my paddles. Oh yeah, this is this is a great game. Check this out. It really sounds like the sky is falling. This is one of those games you really need paddles I mean, like you, in more ways than one. And it gets harder. You really gotta be paying 
serious attention in this game. Oh my god! That's impossible! What is this? That's not even... Alright, so check it out. This is the most tried and true version of the back bit. This was the first back bit. We've got the back SID sound generator chip. We've got the plaster PLA replacement chip. So let's power this baby on and see what we can do with it. So for starters, go to my favorite music here. Racing Destruction Set. Check that out. So this is audio coming directly from the back SID chip. So let's play some games on here. This is one of my favorite, Diamond Mine. Alright, we got the Genesis server version 2 here. Plug this baby in. So I got this Easy Flash Nirvana collection from COM4. And I know everybody loves this Prince of Persia port. Look familiar? So I can go back to the browser here. Got the Ultima 4 remastered. If you have a vintage computer system that is not currently supported by the BackBit Pro cartridge, I welcome donations and loaners for continued development. Let me know in the comments below if there is a system you want to see supported. Due to the global chip shortage, there is a bit of a queue forming for orders for the BackBit Pro cartridge, but if you order now at store.backbit.io, I'll reserve your place in line. So that's about all I have for you today on Evie's review. Bye.